we all deal with we all deal with feelings of discontentment like basically it means frustration and where we are and we're just like I, I I am where I am but I want to be somewhere else I want to be in a different space in my life or whatever we honestly all deal with it and so today on the show what I want to talk to you about is how to manage it how to deal with it and how to be able to live in the moment that you're in and be able to move forward so welcome back to another episode of the You, Me, and Jesus podcast, where we talk about all things you, me, and Jesus. It's just me sharing my life with you about my relationship with God and all the things. And so today on the show, we are talking about like managing or dealing with discontentment, okay? And so one of the things we always do on this show is we like to go to Dr. Google to see what does Google have to say about a thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in Google and we're gonna look and see what does Google say about discontentment, all right? So discontentment, there we go. So Google says the definition of discontentment as in dissatisfaction is the condition of being dissatisfied with one's life or situation. It also says that discontentment is a noun, blah, blah, to be unhappy or dissatisfied with something. It can also mean a restless desire for something that isn't available. For example, someone might feel discontentment if they think they should be um, here, but they're actually in this space that they're in right now. So I wrote down a couple notes about like three things that I feel like you can do to deal or manage with discontentment. Now I'm not necessarily just going to go and like list them all off because obviously that's not what you want to experience here on the show, but I am going to go over them and I always like to have my notes. I actually have four points. Okay. So when I think about feeling discontent, I'm like, I feel that way in lots of different areas, right? Like currently I am at 200 and something pounds and the body that I'm really, really used to the most is right around 170. And so that means I am 50 pounds heavier than what I am used to. And so there is this like frustration with accepting today's body, today's pair of jeans, the way I look in this outfit and whatever, how my face looks, you know, here, there's this like restlessness with that, right? Um, I have been single for 10 years now. Like I literally haven't gone on a date in 10 years and I have this, you know, like, when is it going to be my time? When is someone going to approach me or does that make sense? Then I have the feelings of like, you know, I have a business and my business is doing fine, but I'm like, of course I want it to be doing better and faster and da, 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 da. You know what I mean? And there's all those things in that. And so I have felt this with so many different areas of my life many, many times. Like obviously I listed three today and like, but I could go on and on and on if I needed to. But I, over the years of being single so long, of watching myself gain weight or what have you, right? Um, of just watching where my business is or where my business, business isn't and developing my relationship with God and going through therapy, I have started to kind of have this resolve, right? I guess I would say resolve or it's like less discontentment and more contentment with where things are. But I had to, I had to go on a journey, right? So let's just talk about weight. Okay. So once I started to gain weight and I found myself not being able to lose weight, you know, whatever was happening with me, I, it was hard. I kept trying to fit into all the same clothes. I then tried to hide the fact that my stomach was, was bulging. And I tried to hide all these different things that were happening with my body. And it was like, I couldn't hide it. Right. But I tried it for years and years and years and years and nothing was nothing was giving, you know? And it wasn't until I watched a video of someone who kept trying to fit into her old jeans. And she had this moment, I think with her therapist where, or something, she had this, she had this revelation where she heard, why don't you just buy bigger pants? And she was like, oh, I'm punishing myself 
for being this size by putting myself in these small pants when I could just go and buy bigger pants. And when I saw her video, it clicked. I had all these belts that I had and I just couldn't fit anymore because I was dealing with the tumors in my stomach. So my stomach was getting bigger and I, you know what I mean? So I was punishing myself. And so it was that weekend when I was like, I'm going to go buy bigger belts. And I threw away all of my old belts and I was driving around town for hours trying to find a store that had belts that would fit me and my body. And when I found them, I bought them in bulk. I went to multiple stores and I bought them in bulk because I was like, I need belts. That's a fact. Those aren't fitting. So I need to get the ones that actually fit me. And then I got new pants. Then I got new dresses. Then I bought a bulk of new shirts and I was like, okay, these fit. I feel good in these. They're not tight. I don't have to whatever, you know, but the reason why I was able to get there, cause I felt the discontentment about my body, but I chose to accept the present reality. And the present reality was this is my body right now. And unless I go and get surgery that removes all these different things or what have you, guess what? We're going to have her until I'm able to lose weight, you know? And the same thing goes for my singleness. You know, I'm like, yes, I want to be with someone. Yes. I want to be married. Yes. I want to do the things that married people do. But I had to like, I had this moment where I was just like, I literally cannot control this. I can get on every single app that there is out there. I can go on reality TV. I can do all of this stuff to help, to help myself find a man, but God is not going to bring him until that time is right. And even that when I have my moments, I go back to, it's not going to happen until God has intentions for it to happen. Right. And so I had to be, I had to start going, while I'm in this singleness, let's talk about it. Let's just be, do what we can do in this time. And that's it. You know, now I will tell you something funny though. So I'm getting ready to move back to Houston in May in a couple months. And one of the things that I did when I moved to California is I had a party and I was like, I posted online and said, if anybody that's in Redding, California, going to have a party at my house on this date. Can you invite people to come? I'll make food. I just want to make new friends. I just wanted to make friends. And so 30 people showed up and I had a great time. So now that I'm moving back to Houston, um, I'm going to Houston next week. And I was like, I want to have a meetup, a dinner meetup. I got to have dinner anyway. So I want to see who wants to come to dinner. Why well, like 50 people say they want to come to dinner. And I'm like, really? So, so far we've had 15 RSVPs and all these things. And I'm like, okay, so now I'm starting to make friends, but intentionally, once I actually get into Houston, I'm going to get with a friend of mine and say, can I have an event at your apartment space? Cause they have like a community room. And cause I don't want people coming to the department I'm living in. Cause I'm like, I don't want people that met me online at my apartment. It's just creepy. You know what I mean? Until you're like friends with them, you know? Um, and I'm going to say, I'm having a party. And I want people that are here online to come to this party. I want you to bring a dish for everybody to eat. And I want you to bring me somebody. I want you to bring me a single man that loves Jesus and likes black girls. And let's just meet him. Right. And like, period, just, let's just meet. Nothing could happen because if my husband ain't there, then guess what? He ain't going to show up, but here's an opportunity. Right. But so in my discontentment of like not being asked on dates, you know, I've decided that, okay, well, I will give myself opportunities and whenever God's going to do what he's going to do, he's going to do what he's going to do. You know what I mean? But anyway, that's a funny story. So I do have four things. I do have four things that I feel like, um, that you could do while you're in this stage of discontentment. Okay. So let's get to the first one. So the first one is you got to focus on the root of why you feel discontentment. Okay. So if you feel discontentment about your relationship status, right? Like you're being single or you're divorced or whatever, you've got to get to the root of why do you feel that way? You know, I feel that way because I'm like, I, I want to build a life with somebody. I don't want to do this life by myself. You know, it's hard doing it by yourself. I want companionship with a man, not my cats. You know, I love my cats, but you know what I mean? I want to, um, 
you know, I want to engage in intimacy, you know, in marriage. And I'm like, and I haven't been able to do that since I got divorced, you know? Um, and I want to grow old with somebody. I want somebody to know me in and out. And I want to know someone else in and out. And I want to be able to do that, you know, with a person. And so, but the root, I'm like, okay, what's the root? I'm like, oh, do I feel lonely? Oh, maybe it's because I feel like if I had somebody, then I wouldn't feel lonely, that I would feel happier or whatever, you know? And so I still feel a twinge of that, like no doubt, you know, I won't even pretend like I don't, but I do. Um, but in the midst of that, I, you know, just kind of was like, I've kind of been like, well, let's talk about that in therapy. <laughs> you know, it's like here are real feelings that I have. I journal about them. I talk to God about them, but I also like take it to my therapist and I'm just like, let's just, can we just talk about this particular subject and like why I feel this way? Or is there anything I do I'm doing? I could be hindering, you know, I got a man to come. Um, am I projecting something on other people that I can't see that I'm projecting and they feel whatever it is that they're feeling when they are around me or with me or whatever. I don't know, you know, but I decided to try to get to the root of it. Um, which is helping me be content right now while I'm still single, you know? Um, so that's what I would encourage first. The second thing I would encourage is to ask God, what is he trying to teach you right now? Ooh, we ask God, what is it? He is trying to teach you right now because here's the truth. Like, listen, if you're going through a super hard time, I don't feel like God put, doesn't put more on you than you can, you can handle those, those words aren't in the Bible. I don't believe, um, like if you're going through something right now, I don't think that God like puts these things on you, so to speak, to like teach you a lesson. Like that's bad parenting. Um, parents don't typically throw you into the lion's den to die and then say, okay, now I'm going to rescue you. No situations may get you into the lines and then God rescues. Right. So I think it's important to ask God, what is it he's trying to teach you right now? Okay. So I'll give you another example right around about me being single. The more that I kept asking about what is happening right now, I've learned so much over the last 10 years. One, I learned, I get angry. I did not know that I get angry, that how angry I can get when there's someone close to me hurts me. I did not know. And I learned that. So then I had to unlearn the patterns of when I get angry, like my behavior or my words and all that. Um, I had to learn how to have healthy dialogue with someone without screaming, without cursing, without tearing them down about how to like fully articulate myself in the heat of a moment in a way that is constructive. And I'm glad that I'm learning how to do that without a partner, you know, um, in this time I'm learning how to take care of a home. You know, I'm learning how to decorate and how to clean. Um, I don't mean clean in general, but you know what I mean? I'm learning how to do all those things and taking care of a home alone without someone, you know, um, I'm learning how to balance budget. I'm learning how to save. I'm learning all these little things that are helpful for me to know before I get with someone, you know, I'm learning more things about my body. You know, I'm learning more things about the opposite sex and their needs and how they feel and how they think and all that. So it's like, I'm not coming to him. It's like, I always wanted to my husband to be my best friend and he can be, but I've learned that men are not like women. The way that me and my best friend are, the way we do what we do, that may not be how he does. And it doesn't make him less of a best friend. It just means here is this friendship and here is this friendship. And I'm learning how female best friends. And then your husband, it's like two different relationships and they, and they're both healthy, you know, but I just, there's just so much I did not know. And so I feel like it's really important for you in this time to figure out what is it that God is trying to teach you right now. The third thing is, um, you have to be preparing for what it is that you want. So you're discontent in whatever it is. And I feel like in this time is a good opportunity to prepare 
for what it is that you actually want, right? So one of the things that I want is I've always wanted to have my own clothing line or whatever. Um, but with having a clothing line, you have to have ideas for like design ideas for colors and patterns uh, and just all these different things, fabrics and all that. And I'm nowhere near there, not even trying there. But what I started to learn in this process is that like, I don't do well with, um, color coordination with matching up clothes, like fashionable type of things. Not good with that at all. So what I have been doing is just taking myself on this slow journey of trying this with this and trying that with that and just trying different things to see how well they work together or don't. And I found myself sometimes feeling like, oh, I'm not getting it right. And then other times I'm like, oh, I really did good with this you know, and just taking myself on that little path. Because if I say I want a clothing line, I should know how to coordinate things. That's the, one of the basics, you know what I mean? Um, and so, yeah, like I, I also used to say that I want to be able to do a smoky eye for date night. You know, if my husband says, Hey, let's go out. And I didn't know how to do makeup at all. So a year or two years ago, I paid somebody to do, no, I pay her I, I did to make up, I, I, I did some teaching for her and she gave me a free class, uh, a zoom. And she taught me how to get started with makeup for me. So I don't have it all the way down right now, but I'm definitely further along today than I was three years ago of makeup to get to being able to make us create a smoky eye for date night. You know what I mean? So I'm preparing for what it is that I say that I want. And so if you're dis, you feel in discontentment, then one of the things you could be doing is actually preparing for what it is that you want. And then the last thing I put down here is that you have to focus on the present. Okay. You have to focus on the present because where you are right now is where you are. You cannot, you cannot be anywhere, but where you are. And you have to look at that and go, okay, how can I appreciate where I am today? Okay. Uh, I remember years ago, God kept telling me that I was going to be wealthy and that I would have these big house and just all this stuff he would tell me for all these years. And I've never owned a home, you know, and I've rented some different places. And one time he told me that if you're faithful over a few things, I'll make you ruler over many things. And this is a really terrible house. And I said yes to the house. Then we ended up moving into a trailer that, um, my friend's mom owned, but she passed away. And so it was just fine. It was, the trailer was fine. No big deal. And then from there, I moved into a really nice brand new home as a roommate with somebody. From there, I moved into a, one, two bedroom, three bedroom town home with my ex-husband. And from there I moved into the studio apartment because I was trying to figure life out. And I remember being in that studio and just being so grateful for a peaceful place. And I just so grateful. I would cry all the time about how peaceful it was. And then I moved into a two bedroom apartment in Houston and I just kept, I've been kept being upgraded the last 10 years or so. And even now where I am right now, it's not super fancy, but it's nice. And I just, a lot of times when I'm praying in the mornings, I just thank God for my place. I thank God that everything looks the way that it looks, that it's clean, that there's no bugs, that the AC works, the heat works, that I'm not at risk in terms of like people breaking into my home, that it's just nice. You know, it's just great, you know? And I just find like contentment in this space that I'm in, that it's mine and all that, you know? And then when I go to the next space, it's like, I've just learned to go like, yes, one day I'm going to have a house and it's going to be this, this, and this. But I'm like, today I have my beautiful two bedroom apartment. It's safe. It's quiet. It's clean. It's awesome. I get to work here. I get to live here. I can entertain friends here, all of that. And it keeps me from being discontent that I don't have that house yet, that I don't have that life that he's been talking to me about for years. Like I'm not yearning like crazy. I gotta have it because I'm like so thankful for where I am and where life is today. Okay. So whatever it is that you are experiencing, I, I strongly encourage you to allow yourself to kind of go through the motions of like really unpacking what's happening 
talking to God about all of that, getting his perspective and then allowing yourself to prepare for where you're going. And while you are thankful for where it is that you are today. And what you're going to find is that life is going to change. Like the circumstances may be exactly the same, but how you are thinking and perceiving it is going to change. And then in turn, how you think and talk and act moving forward is going to be drastically different because of the work that you did in uprooting, you know, letting God do what he's going to do and all the things. Okay. So I hope you found this valuable. I always love sharing, you know, my life, you know, and my relationship with God and the journey that I'm on. Cause like, I'm not finished yet. Like nobody else. I'm like, I'm just on the journey. And so I'm glad that and grateful that you listen to the show, um, that you watch us here on YouTube because it's humbling to just share your, like the, the vulnerable types, the, the, the vulnerable aspects of me. But I'm also like, I don't know, it feels very freeing to just share my journey with you. And I hope that it, you know, helps you or whatever. So thank you so much for listening and watching.